Hey everybody, this is Perch, and I want to acknowledge um, this kind of, not elephant in the room, but just 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 a fact, because I think, uh, I miss, by the way, I do these live streams, and uh, there's this guy, uh, I actually, I don't, I'm not sure, male or female, but anyway, uh, this person, Horizon Brave, comes into, used to come into the chat, I haven't seen Horizon Brave in a long time, but I miss that, I miss that person, um, I always like to, I always like their point of view, uh, but you know, I, we've had, I've had some really good, I'd say, uh, debates are too strong a word because it's not like we're on opposite ends of the argument, but it's this idea of like, how much do you hang on to the past in comics? And to some extent, isn't hanging on to the past kind of annoying uh, after a while? And I, my perspective, which I think you can probably gather from the thousands of videos at this point that have been published, is that I think that the past needs to be respected, remembered, and not thrown out. Because it, it, was, it was a building block. It's like if you built a building, you wouldn't just randomly say, hey, uh, the first floor was built a long time ago. So let's just kind of remove those bricks and, you know, it'll be fine. It'll be, everything will be fine. The building will not, definitely not topple over if you remove all the structure from the first five floors. It's cool. I view comics that way. I view that everything is building on everything else and that it's a platform. And yes, that definitely makes it hard if you're working for Marvel and DC and they have like a 50-year continuity. The job is tougher than if you strike out and do it on your own. But it's also the job is easier because you're leveraging, you know, a lot of existing IP. I, I always get, I don't know, cross-eyed or I look sideways, whatever you want to say. It. I always get frustrated when creators will say things like, well, you know, I coming onto a book like Spider-Man is intimidating because there's you know, 50 years of, uh, of pre-stories over there. Where do you even begin? It's like, okay, I hear you, but you're also taking Marvel's money, uh, which is which is paid higher than most in the industry. You're also uh, leveraging the fact that everybody knows Spider-Man, so you have a built-in audience. The fact that you, kind of unknown writer, get to hang your hat on Spider-Man. You know, when you're creating a Twitter profile or you're writing your little blog, and you're talking about the comics you used to be on, you absolutely leverage those brands people know. Even if you're very proud of your independent work, if you worked on Batman or Superman or Spider-Man, I mean, you you definitely put those names up there. And why do you do that? Because people know who those characters are. So I think it's a little bit disingenuous to kind of sit there and go, well, I, you know, I, I, I don't want to be bound by the past, but I absolutely want to leverage all of the brand power of the past. I just want to do whatever I want. I wish more people would just like say what they mean. You know, it's, it's the, I mean, why not just say, Hey, I want to come in here, not do any research and do whatever I want with character. And, uh, but I still want all the pay and prestige of working for a top character. I just, just <laughs> people don't say that stuff out loud because they'd sound like assholes, but you know, that is what's going on uh, at the same time. And here's where I bring up uh, horizon brave but again, wish I wish we'd come back to a chat. Anyway, um, I, I do think, it, put yourself for just a moment in the shoes of somebody coming in new to comics, right? You're, you're interested, you've, you've seen a cartoon or a movie or something, you see these comics, you're kind of curious to do it, you go into a shop and you're, you're ready to begin. And you, you do not have decades worth of knowledge in your head about these comics. You're starting brand new. And I, it's absolutely true. I, I've known many a shop. I've got people who I would consider good friends in the comic retail industry who are this way in their personalities. Um, it's funny. Whenever I meet these people, I find it a gift for me because it's a reminder not to, not to do this myself. I, I, I always take it as a, a nice reminder of don't drive away your customers. Because it is true that people will stand there and go, Ah, oh, you don't know anything. You got to if, if you haven't read these five thousand issues of X Men, then you 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 just you, you, you don't even really know what you're doing. You just like, oh, and this one comic right here, the one where they showed that uh, you know Wolverine once owned a sword with a blue handle. Well, in issue number uh, five hundred and eighty-two, it uh, it defined already in continuity that he had a sword with a red handle that was his first handled sword. And it's like, all right, douche, come on. <laughs> I think continuity is important. I think people should try and respect it. I think that over the course of decades worth of material, that mistakes are going to be made. I think that editors and people within the comics should do their best to try not to make mistakes. And I think the fans should be forgiving when honest mistakes get made. 
you know, blatant, stupid mistakes. Uh, no, I mean, you know, that, that there is a job again, that pays money for, you know, various positions, whether it's editorial or other people within the comic industry. I do think that comic writers coming in to uh, stand on the shoulders of giants as it were, and, and write some of these characters. I think that it's, uh, it's up to them to do the research. I think that's good. Um, but you know, I don't think they have to be held to an immaculate standard. I think that mistakes will be made. And I think as long as you're, you're doing your best to try and respect what came before you, if a mistake is made, you're like, all right, I'll try and fix that. Like I did in a, in a previous video, this is what no prizes were arguably for. And I think we, you know, I think that there are definitely comic fans and comic retailers and people who are way too uptight about this stuff and just won't acknowledge that, yeah, mistakes get made. Mistakes get made, and and that it, it's not a, it's not an unpardonable sin. People should relax a little bit. I do think that comic continuity can be very very tangled. Again, over decades, and you have different writers, different visions, different ideas. And for what it's worth, and I say this as my favorite decade, hands down, was the '80s for comics. And I don't say that just because like oh the She Hulk had tits then. No, I'm saying it because the indie scene was great. There were a lot of new ideas being tried. I mean, I, as I've established over and over and over, I like reading a big variety of comics. And in the 80s, there was a big variety. You could get your hands on a lot of different things. From the big two, from the indies, it, it was a good time. And I, I feel like and, and the comics were priced cheap enough that it was very easy for you to kind of locate and search out everything. That's my reason. Now, everybody's got their favorite decade, and it's fine. Um, but uh, in the 80s, even though I love it, to be fair, uh, writers would frequently try and screw with each other and with the editors and with the companies by intentionally breaking continuity. Several writers have bragged about this. They would do things that would intentionally kind of screw things up. They would see if they could sneak that by the editors. And it was just, it was a dynamic of how comics work. Um, I, you know, today, I think a lot of things get broken in continuity because people just don't know any better and they don't bother to do the research and maybe they don't, you know, care too much. They, they put something out and it's like, well, I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm not paid enough and I've got five other comics, so screw it. You know, let the, let the, let the I picture Marvel, by the way, this is going to be a super old reference. Um, have you ever seen the very, very old I Love Lucy bit where her and was it Ethel, her friend, they're on a conveyor belt and they get a job doing chocolate. And the chocolate's coming out, and they have to like wrap it. And very soon, the uh, the chocolate starts coming out at such a fast speed, they they like can't keep up, and like stuff's just going through, and they're trying to eat it and stuff it in their shirt because they're just they can no longer keep up. That's what Marvel feels like to me a lot. I always picture that image. Like so just comics are just shooting down the the assembly line, and people like ah, get them out of here as fast as we can. Oh crap, here comes King and Black, and just, the comics are just sh you know shooting out the window. Anyway. I, I'm I'm old. There you go. Uh, what do you what do you what what can you do? But this stuff is on the YouTubes, as the the millennials like to say. So you can see it there. I like to when I think I'm saying something old to then double down with an older way of saying that something old. That's just my style. Uh, but I, I totally get. And I think if you're a comic fan, if you are somebody who does, you're lucky enough to have those decade decades of knowledge of comics continuity. Good for you. And I think you know a little bit of empathy. For people who are coming in new where this is very overwhelming, rather than kind of shit on people for not knowing something, maybe help point them in the right direction. Help uh, help say, hey, you know, here's, here's a place to begin. Here's some comics today. If you love this, hey, how about these 50 things? It, it, this is pretty cool over here. It's, that's, a, that's a nice thing to do. And in fairness, I think that, you know, continuity can easily be a trap. And I think you can drown in it. Um, I think you can respect continuity without you know, having it bury you in the ground. And I think you should set out to write a character or a story that's true to that character. And I think you should, you know, set out not to, you know, invent new things that just randomly blow up things that have been done in the past. I think that's more respectful to the character. I also think it's more respectful to the creators. I, it's, it's, it feels very hypocritical to me that on a regular basis, I, you know, you'll see creators today talk about how, you know, comics is a close-knit community, and we look out for each other. And then somebody will come onto a title and immediately start, you know, writing something that just wildly invalidates what was done before. 
And I will tell you, by the way, <laughs> there are absolutely some creators out there who are taking receipts for all the uh, just ham-fisted, stupid ways that uh, they're, you know, people who came after them are treating some of their work. That, that's absolutely the case. <laughs> there, there are some grudges being built as we speak. I've, I've heard from several creators who are like, ah, oh, this person acts nicey nice to me, but then couldn't even give me the respect of, uh, you know, reading the comics that uh, came three months before their run. It's like, like, oh man, I have a feeling that when the conventions open back up again, there's going to be like, uh, this could be the, like the, like an orgy, like the, the pressure will come out and suddenly everybody will be there and, and, and it's just going to be an insane, drunken, nonsensical party. But later that night, um, with the aid of alcohol, the gloves will come off and some grudges will be settled. <laughs> I think it's going to be this roller coaster of emotion. That's that's my prediction anyway. Uh, what about you? Continuity. You know, do you think there's, I think there's a balance here. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe. Uh, thanks for listening.